Hey everybody, today on Rattle Run Sue, we're having a preview of Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition Discovery Foundations Crisis. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to the Red Planet, everybody. It's wonderful! Look at all this ocean, look at all this oxygen, look at all this heat! We have truly terraformed Mars after many, many generations of hard work. But but we've got a problem. There is an extinction level event on our horizon. A massive asteroid has slammed into the planet and it has created a whole series of crises. Now I've already got uh, my deck of crisis cards set up for a solo run through that I'm going to be doing today to try to keep the dream of terraformed Mars alive. Uh, when you play with the crisis module that comes in this expansion, all the corporations put their different aside and work towards a common good in a co-op, or in this case, a solo mode. Now, there are other uh, modules that come in this expansion, like a new infrastructure track that we can start developing, uh, all the pieces you need for a fifth and a sixth player, new types of cards, all kinds of really cool stuff. But uh, the main thing I really want to focus on today is how this new crisis mode works. So, uh, as you can see, the planet is looking great, the asteroid is hit, and we have a whole new set of things we have to do every round. I mean, the, for the most part, the game is the same. We do our planning, then we resolve steps, and then we do end steps, and of course, we're doing all the regular actions, depending on what actions players choose. But before we get to planning, there is now, I'm going to put this over here, a crisis step where um, we have to uh, check how we are doing on the metrics of the planet. And what that means is, hey, at the beginning of the game, everything's great. But over time, our oxygen and our heat and our oceans are going to start disappearing because of this huge impact. And they'll start falling. When they fall into the yellow and the red zones, and you'll, by the way, you'll notice that this is a new co-op version of the board that shows what the yellow and the red and the purple zone is for the oceans themselves, depending on how many I have to flip back over, we will start getting these things in play that are not very good. Uh, so we need to try to keep our stats up that we worked so hard to get to. Now, at the beginning of the game, nothing has come down yet. I mean, the asteroid is only just now struck, so nothing bad has happened yet. Um, and, and we don't have any crisis cards in play that would give ongoing negative effects. However, honeymoon's over. It struck. Let's draw our first card from the Crisis deck, do any immediate effects, and then next round, we will get hit by the ongoing persistent effects. And then we draw hand cards for the dummy hand, uh, because we're going to need some help uh, to save the planet. Now, I, I should say, I uh, set up the Crisis cards. Some cards were taken out, and these are all cards for a solo game. There's completely different decks of Tier 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 cards if you're playing two or, th or, or more players. Uh, one interesting thing is if I wanted to play at an easier difficulty level, I could put at the top of this deck some tier zero cards, which would give me a little bit of breathing room before it really starts hurting us bad. But nope, I'm just jumping right into the thick of things. So let's have our first event... Oh, we've had an atmospheric rupture. That's not good. So we immediately, as a group, lose five mega credits or one um, terraforming ranking. And uh, then that's going to happen right now. And every round, as long as this rupture is still here, as long as we haven't fixed it, our O2 meter is going to start dropping. Now, what can we do about it? Well, since I'm playing solo, uh, you'll notice the number one here. I put one of these emergency tokens there. I have to once play a space tag to remove a counter. So I have to get a card in play that has the uh, space attribute on it. Now, if I were playing at higher player counts, chances are we might have to do that two or three or four times. Uh, for But since I'm playing solo, I just have to do that once. So I put this little marker here. Once I have put a space card into play, we are good to go. This will go away. But until then, the uh, oxygen is just going to start dropping. And when it drops into the yellow and the red, bad things will happen. If it falls all the way off, then we lose the game immediately. So, that's our first starting problem we've got. Now, let's actually try and turn this frown upside down and save the red planet. Now, I should say, by the way, uh, for starters, I am the Corporation Burstar, which is one of the new corporations that came with the game. 
There's a whole bunch of them. Some of them are specifically for the co-op mode, and I decided to start with one of those. This one says, only use when playing in Crisis. So, my deal is, I had a 38 Mega Credits to begin with, and I've got a special power. If I ever play a card that costs 18 credits or more, I can immediately move a Crisis counter. So, I've got two ways to deal with this. Get a plan into play, or get something super expensive into play, because that's Burn Star's deal. Let's see here. Let me look at the uh, other co-op ones. Right. Uh, Magna. The effect here is, when I remove a counter from a Crisis card, I get some money. So, there's a little bit of profit to be made in saving the planet. Or, let's see, uh, Sherizen. Uh, give one card in hand to another player. They can give one to you. And that's not going to be very good in the solo mode, so I'm not going to be going for that one. But as you can see, there is uh, uh, an interesting uh, mix of new things we can do to deal with these crises. Okay, so... We have dealt with all of the normal crisis step. Now we just go into planning. We resolve uh, you know, our phases. And then we have an extra step we do at the end step. We can give up victory points. Because sometimes cards make you victory points in this game. Traditionally, in Ares Expedition, you want those points to win the game. But now, we can spend those points as another way to get rid of these dastardly events that are hounding us. So anyway, um, what am I going to do? Well, you know what? As part of setup, I drew a hand of five cards. Please! Oh, look right off the bat. I've got imported nitrogen and Vespa shipyards. Those are both plants, as is another uh, uh, imported uh, hydrogen this time. And Lagrange Observatory. Wow, I have a lot of outer space cards. I think we're going to be good. I think uh, this thing isn't going to bother us too terribly. Oh, except, let's not forget, it is bothering us. Because I either have to lose five Mega Credits or one um, Terraform rating. I don't want to lose that, because that's my income. So I'll just go on ahead and lose five of my starting 38. Now, that was a one-time thing, but the O2 drop will stick around for a while. So all i got to do this round is get um, this, or this, or this, or this, or this into play. That was pretty handy. So, which of these do I want to do? Well, um... Maybe the Lagrange Observatory, because it's nice and cheap. Uh, just a quick event. Oh, and it will also give me a victory point. And remember, um, since I'm not playing to win against somebody else, these victory points, whenever you earn victory points in this mode, you grab one of the, uh, of the tree counters to represent a bank of these you've got that at the end of a turn you can spend to get rid of stuff. So... Normally, I wouldn't be that excited about this, but I am kind of excited about now, um, because it'll save my bacon right now and later, although it won't be setting up for any engine building stuff, which, of course, is what this game is all about. What are the other cards that aren't helping right now? Oh, Greenhouse Gas Factories. Oh, I kind of want this one, because this represents an entirely new element of the game. Let's go ahead and look at it a little bit more closely. Alrighty, so, and turn off my green screen, because green doesn't work well with green, as it happens. Alright, this has a new function of upgrading a phase card. And then also, for the rest of the game, during production, I produce credits and heat. Uh, it costs 22, but uh, if I've got investments, I can make it a bit cheaper and all that. So this is one of the new upgrade phase cards. What does that mean, you might be wondering? I'm glad you asked. If I get this into play and upgrade my face card, remember, in regular, um, you know, Ares Exposition, everybody has the same basic set of five cards for construction, action, production, research, and development, right? Everybody now has access to 10 upgrade cards where you can turn the bonus you get from regular construction to from, hey, draw a card or play an additional blue card or red card this phase. That's your traditional one. You can upgrade that to uh, draw a card. You can play a second bluer card uh, this phase. Which is a big step up, because before it was draw or play, now it's draw and play, or where's the other construction upgrade? Okay, uh, you can pl you don't draw, but you can play an additional card, or get six mega credits. And so once you have done, and every one of your standard actions has two different upgrades you could choose from. So, while I need to deal with this, I would love to get this into play right now, and start upgrading my phases for the rest of the game. That would be very cool too. And killing two birds with one stone, or two crises with one card. Remember, as a burst star, if I play a card that costs 18 or more, I immediately remove a card. So I could get this done. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm not saying this is the smartest move, um, you know, because. Uh, but still, also, I mean, this thing had a really nice income, too. It's a huge investment right now to get these greenhouse gas factories built. But I do think it's going to pay off in the end. So, 
Right. That means I want to play this. That means I need to call for development. Because uh, remember, uh, the normal function of the game is everybody simultaneously picks and reveals a phase card from their hand, and uh, then you figure out, and then you go on ahead and do those phases. Although, hold on a second, I forgot. I don't have to pick yet right away because I've got a friend in this deck of Crisis solo cards. It's actually a different deck for if you're playing with multiple players, but I'm playing solo today. So, since I'm playing solo, I am going to draw two of these. And I can choose whether this one's going to be development or production, and whether this one's going to be action or production. So I could have two production this turn, or development and a production or an action, plus whatever I'm going to choose. So that is all very, very cool. Now this, of course, replicates. If I were playing this cooperatively with other human players, you know, in the regular Ares Expedition, everybody's very um, quiet, and nobody wants to give away what they're doing, and everybody's trying to figure out what everybody else is going to do. When you're playing cooperatively to save the planet, we openly discuss what we're going to do, and we try to come up with a plan that's going to work. I mean, what if multiple players want to do development? so that they can get the discount. Who's going to do it? Are multiple people going to do it? Are we going to try to be more efficient? I mean, it, it really changes up the feel of the game to have this kind of control. And for the solo game, they replicate that by saying, hey, I've got two teammates, and they've got any combination of these. So... I don't have to play development. I could have my buddy play development for me. But I want to play development so I can get that discount. Uh, because this, uh, you know, this is an expensive card, right? So I'm going to have this card be all about production. So this turn, we're going to be doing production, and since we're doing that, I don't think it makes sense to have another card do the same thing. That'd be kind of wasteful. So I'll have this card be action. So it's like I've worked out with my other t human teammates. Hey, uh, I'm going to do an action, and somebody else says I'm going to do production, and I say. I'm going to develop, baby. Here we go. So, this round, we are doing development, we are doing action, and we are doing production. As you can see, in a solo game, it effectively, with these cards, it replicates a three-player game. Okay. Now, the problem is, this action, I'm going to have to waste it, because this is not a blue card. This is not an action card. But, I will get a good payday out of it, because we, I mean, I'll get this built, and then we'll go right into production. But, I mean, it's, it's nothing I can do. It's either I choose action... Or I choose production, and a double production isn't going to do me any good anyway. So it's kind of immaterial. Unless, knowing what I've got here, I mean, this is what I want to build. This is going to solve a lot of problems. But since I'm doing an action, maybe I want to get an... Oh, you know what? Never mind. I didn't draw any blue cards in my opening hand of eight cards. So yeah, I guess that's that. I think we've chosen everything that's going to go. And so now, let's start resolving. Development first. Alrighty. Uh, each player can play one green card, and I get to pay three less because I triggered it. So this doesn't cost me 22. This costs me 19. Now, fortunately, I started with 38, although I just lost five. But let's go on ahead and pay 20. Ouch. And get one in change. Alrighty. And I've now got greenhouse gas factories. Which means I have now, I am generating two credits whenever we do production, which we're doing this round, and one heat to try to uh, get the planet under control. So I'm pretty happy with that. And of course, they're not actually going to do anything. They're just giving me more opportunities to do stuff. Okay, so unfortunately, we did not have any construction this turn. Uh, and then we have an action. And I, 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 well, remember, actions means either, um, you know, activating your blue cards or doing any of the basic actions. And I have 14 credits left. If I had 15 credits, I could recover an ocean, but I haven't lost any oceans yet. See, this is a really weird twist of events. You're so used to thinking, oh, it starts out as a red dusty planet. No, it's a, a verdant paradise now, and we're trying to save it. So I don't think we're going to be doing any actions here. Nope, because nothing has fallen yet, and I didn't have any blue cards. So we move on to production. Hoorah! And there's a little reminder here, of course, like always, when production, each player gets heat plants and draws cards according to their production levels and gets credits equal to their production plus their terraform rating. My terraform rating is 5, so I'm going to get 5 credits. And I am going to get, what was it, 1 heat? The heat is on, and I get 2 more credits thanks to my greenhouse gas factories. Okay. All righty. So things are going pretty well, but I forgot, folks. I forgot. Uh, this is why you always watch the thing on subtitles turned on. Back during development, when I developed this thing, I not only got my income, I got to upgrade a phase card. So let's do that, shall we? So, I mean, I could change my development card into a, a different function. Uh, my bonus could be all about reducing the cost of the first card you play by three. 
uh, which is basically the original thing. And then you can play a second one, but um, it can't be cost more than 12. So you have to play a relatively cheap one as a second thing. So that's pretty cool. Or my development bonus could become re uh, reduce the cost of the card you play by six, doubling the reductions. That's pretty cool. Um, and you know what? And actually, strictly speaking, I, I have a fair number of decently expensive green cards. So it might be nice to do that. But on the flip side... I just um, really did a nice foundation of production. Maybe I want to update my production ability. All right, so if I were to do that, let's see. I could say that my bonus, instead of the regular production bonus, which is, hey, get four credits. If you're the one who triggers production, I could get seven credits. So I could really be rolling in the dough. Or the other one is, I could only get one credit. So that's kind of a downgrade. But I can activate the production effect of one of my green cards twice. So instead of getting two out of this, I would get four out of this, and I would get two heat instead of one. That could be very powerful, too, for the rest of the game. Now, of course, I don't know what events are coming. Uh, and interestingly, as part of setup, I had to remove, I think, six potential cards. So you can never, even if you've memorized this deck, you can never be sure which ones are coming, because so many of them are removed. And, um, oh, and by the way, I didn't show them, but you know, I, I mentioned how if I were playing on easier, I could have been playing with tier zeros right from the get-go. The tier zeros are kind of fun, because they just tell a story. Um, no bad things happen for the first few rounds, and um, please respond! And you know, a little bit of background as to just how uh, terrible it is, because we've got a bleak forecast after our damage report, and we send out a distress signal. But nope, like I said, I just jumped right into the thick of it. And, right, so what am I going to upgrade? I think I'm going to upgrade production. I'm going to upgrade production, and I, I, I want to be able to start producing heat faster. So I'm going to take this one, which means I am... Arguably, in one way, downloading. I'm not making as much cash, but I am um, getting to produce more heat. So that might be nice. And you know, as I get more pro green production stuff in place, that might come in handy. So this basically is out of the game, and this now goes into my upgraded deck. And now here's the interesting thing. If I ever get a chance, I mean, this was a one-time event. If I ever get another chance to upgrade, I could upgrade any of my other ones, or I could turn this to the other thing if I prefer because of changing circumstances. So anyway, so I did that upgrade, and hey, let's also not forget, my special power is when I buy something super expensive, I get to eliminate a problem. So, atmospheric rupture, fixed, solved. I don't think this is going to be a problem at all, folks. I think we've, uh, we are Johnny on the spot. Okay, so, uh, and then, after we did all the development, I, I skipped actions, then I did production. I've already done that. I made my money. I got my heat. And so, we have resolved phases. Now, at the end step, there's an extra thing. If I had earned any victory points, and you earn victory points midway... Normally, you don't care about victory points until the end of the game, but the way this works now is, as soon as I build this shipyard, I will snag one of these, and its sole purpose is, at the end of a turn, I can spend it to get rid... or to make progress on getting rid of the crises. Actually, actually, before we go on, I just need to make clear, you actually have to spend two of those chips to get rid of a crisis token, not one. Very, very important. That'd be playing on easy, easy, easy mode otherwise. So remember, it's two chips to get rid of one of those tokens. Now, I don't have any of those yet. There aren't any crises. So we're ready to go on to round two because everything is awesome. And all right, so there are no detriment tokens that come into play yet because nothing. I mean... You know, we're, we're weathering this storm just fine. But now, uh, and there are no persistent effects. So now we're going to see our second one. We're still in tier one. And the new one is a catastrophic erosion. Randomly reveal a phase card from my hand. I cannot choose that. So I lose. Oh, I don't want to lose my upgraded card. That would not be good. Let's see what I cannot do this turn. All righty. Bippity boppity, bippity boppity boop, bippity boppity boop. And it is... Construction. Okay, so construction joins my development. These are both off limits. I cannot do them. So I could do my enhanced production this turn if I wanted. All right, so that was the immediate problem. Next round, we're going to start losing oceans. And to um, solve this, I have to play green cards. I just need to build up our infrastructure to deal with this erosion. And I've got to do it twice. And as long as it takes to do that, I am going to be losing our ocean. So that's kind of scary. Alrighty. And unfortunately, I just did a green card. It's too late for this one. But remember, I did have some more green cards in hand. So maybe that's what I'm going to try and push next round. Heck, if I could play an expensive green card, I would I would lose one of these for um, playing a green. And then by playing something that costs over 18, I'd lose the other one and the erosion. Problem solved. Maybe that's what I need to do. Except... 
I can't develop anymore. At least I can't call for development. Because remember, that's one of the core things about Ares Expedition. Um, you leave your card you played in the previous round, so I've got to play a new card now. I can only call for actions, do research, or production. What am I going to do? Well, maybe I'll get some help from my buddies. Because once again, I'm going to draw two more of these. And we've got construction production and action res research. Ah! Can't do any development. Cannot play a green card this turn, even if I wanted to. Now, as you might imagine, if I were playing cooperatively, there I, I, probably somebody around the table would say, don't worry, I'll, I'll play green. Can we get rid of this? But of course, if I were playing cooperatively, there would probably be more of these we have to get rid of. So I'm playing solo. Well, I'm, I, so I'm going to get, we're going to lose an ocean in round three. I don't think I can take care of both of these. Um, unless... I play something really expensive to use that that gives me a victory point, and then I could use that to clear this out. So anyway, I've got to decide. Um, is it going to be action construction, production research, production action, and then plus, I'm going to throw one in as well. And um, interestingly, I mean, I could do production now, and I would make one, uh, two, three, four, five, and I'd make two heat. I don't need the heat, though. Right, at least not right now. So what do I want to do? How am I going to play these? Well, it also depends. What am I going to play here? Am I going to get Callisto Penal Mines or the Vespa Shipyard? Oh, the Vespa Shipyard. If it only costs two more, I could actually do it. But I, mean, I can't. I can't play any greens. My buddies can't do it. I can't do it. So am I going to try and get one of these events in play? Release the inert gases, which will bump me up by two. Oh, shoot! Speaking of which, I forgot, folks. Um, during my production phase, uh, remember, I got whatever. I, you know, I got my uh, money from the, uh, uh, you know, from the greenhouse factory, but I also get money based on my terraforming level. No, no, no. I think, uh, yeah, this was the five I got. I did get that. But yeah, you know what? I think I only paid 20 for this, didn't I? I'm a big cheater. This costs 22 which I did have at the time. Folks, is why you always watch those Klingon subtitles. I'm sure Paula was already making fun of me. So anyway. So, um, right, 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 right. What am I going to do? Well, it all comes down to how am I going to use these cards? Remember, I can't play any of these, so let's just not even look at them. So, do I want to create an event? An event's not going to help me with this, and they're expensive, and I'm getting low on cash already. Although, remember, anytime you want in Ares Expedition, you can always trash a card to instantly get three credits. So I've got a lot more money on hand than it looks. This only costs seven. Drawing a card. Here's the thing that's bumming me out. I have no blue cards. I am not happy about that. I mean, I already wasted one opportunity to have an action. I don't want to have that happen again. I need to solve that. So how about we get this LaGrange Observatory built? That might be nice. Plus, it'll get me that one point I, that can help me with this. So, okay. This is what I want to build. Right, so I haven't done it yet. This is what I want to do. And um, I can't do it because I lost my ability to construct this turn as part of the catastrophic erosion. So I think I'll have my buddy over here say, hey, you know what? We're going to do some construction this turn. And let's see. Uh, the construction... and uh, actions, actions are useless. Uh, let's, uh, let's have... Uh, we'll do some construction, some research, boss. Okay, that sounds good to me. So what am I going to do? Um, you know what? I'll use my super production card. That sounds pretty good. All right, so there we go. So... All right, uh, they revealed, I reveal, and of course, you know, I mean, it's all supposed to be face down and everybody reveals at the same time, and then I get these cards back. Because remember, you can never do the same thing twice in a row. So we are this turn doing some production, some research, and some construction in that order. Okay, so I want to construct the LaGrange Observatory, which, by the way, would have helped with that atmospheric um, leak there, but that's okay. All right, so um, this is going to cost me seven. Just so happens, I've got seven. Here's five, six, seven. No problem. Easy peasy. And uh, what's my reward for this? Well, first of all, in the regular game, I'd get a point at the end of the game. But uh -uh. right now, I get a life-saving thing that goes in the bank anytime I want. At the end of a turn, I can spend this to get rid of one of these. And now one thing I should say, you earn these for getting victory points all out of this. You do not earn them for working... You know, once these start falling and I start doing terraforming to make them go back up, and that makes my terraform rating go up, that does not give me these tokens. Only actual victory points off of cards gets me these tokens that can help fight that. All right, so we have done some construction. I don't get to do anything else because I didn't trigger it. And uh, we then move on to production. Hey, I'm going to uh, get my... I'm going to get everything, plus my bonus is one more buck 
plus I get to activate one of my green cards twice. So I'm going to activate this twice. So actually, I didn't need one. I might as well have just gotten five because that was one, two, three, four, five. And I get two heat. The heat continues to be on. And that song is now very, very firmly stuck in my head. Uh, hopefully you are sharing that experience with me. All right. So I did some super production. I can't do this next round. And now finally some research. Um, oh, wait. Oh, but wait. When I built this, again, I forgot. Uh, I um, In addition to getting this, I immediately got to draw a card from... The super ginormous deck of cards, which has only gotten bigger. Uh, there are a bunch of new cards added in here from this new expansion. Uh, like, like the one you already saw that uh, you know gave me the ability to upgrade. There are other new types of things too. Maybe we'll see some of them as we go. And let's see, what's my new card? It's labs. Still no blue cards. Okay. So I did that. Now we're moving on to research. And research says, as always, draw two, keep one. Eins, zwei. And what have we got? Hey, that's more like it. Okay, which of these am I going to keep? All right. Um, ugh. Physics complex requires four science. That's that's a ways off. I will not be getting that. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, this is one that gives uh, victory points based on you know certain parameters. So this could be generating me these things um, to be able to fight more stuff. But uh, four science. I don't. You know, even though this is the volcanic soil, costs twenty four. Yikes! But meh. all right. So that's what I drew. Oh, speaking of money, by the way, man. I don't know why I always forget this. During production, it says it quite clearly. Um, you know, get your um, you know your your money equal to your uh, what do you call it? The uh, uh, terraforming rating. And my terraforming is five. I should have got five more. Oh, okay. So anyway, so there we go. So maybe I will be able to get that volcanic soil. But anyway, so we have finished round two, and now here we are at the end of the round. I could give up this victory point to get rid of one of these. But it won't be enough to prevent me, us from losing one ocean. So I can't stop that. So we might as well just let it go. And I'll maybe save this for later uh, as I need it. So we, at the end of the step, I'm not spending any victory points to remove counter from the uh, play. And so we go on to the next round. And um, once again, have anything fallen into the yellow? No, they haven't. So I don't start putting uh, detrimental things that will start to speed up the planetary collapse. And uh, then... We have our first resistant, I lose an ocean. So I've got to flip one of these, which means I have an opportunity to flip it back. Because I've, I've mentioned how you can lose. If these things fall all the way down, or if we make it all the way through this deck, uh, we run out of time and the planet is lost. How do we win? Well, there's a certain deck in here. I believe it's tier four. Once we get to that, we, ha we are at the precipice. We can turn things around. Where is it? Uh, it's uh, you know, tier two. We got some tier threes, and then we got the tier threes. When we eventually get to the only tier four card, the dwindling supplies, uh, this is when we have the opportunity to win. Because after this has happened, if we can fully terraform Mars again before the deck runs out, we win. So that means uh, it goes back to regular. I mean, we started out full up. Things are going to start degrading over time. Once we get past Tier 4, we have until the end of Tier 5 to get everything back up to 100%. And if we can do that before time runs out, we win. So right now, we're just trying to staunch the bleeding, and uh, we'll try to repair stuff later on. And speaking of the bleeding, we're going to lose our first ocean. And it's an interesting thing. I can pick any of these to lose, and that means when I eventually fix it, I know what I'll be getting back. And uh, it's interesting, the rules specifically say that when things are face down, you're always allowed to look at them. Uh, because at one point, we knew what these things generated. So I think it would be... Do I want the one that will just give us a lot of money when I eventually fix this one? Money's nice, but you know what? Cards are nicer. So this is the one that's going to be face down. We just lost that ocean. We'll have to terraform it back. And um, right, so that was that. We um, have dealt with that. And now I have to draw our second one. All righty, and... There's a barren crater right where the uh, asteroid hit. Immediately, oh, draw a card, but decrease oxygen by one step. So some good and some bad. What, uh, th so that asteroid brought us something uh, in addition to ruin and despair. It brought us the groundwork of being able to figure out surface mines. So that just went into my hand, but the O2 level just dropped for the first time. And remember, once it gets into yellow, we are going to have to bring um, this into play, which is we don't get bonuses during development. That's not good. Okay. So, uh, that happened immediately. We put two tokens on here because to fix this, we have to play blue cards. So, I need to be playing now blue and uh, green cards to uh, rebuild from all this destruction. Or... 
play really expensive cards, or score and use points. Those are my options to deal with the catastrophic erosion. And every round, as long as this stays out, yikes, I lose another ocean, or we drop one on the temperature, as long as this crater continues to be a problem. Okay, so, that's not good. Alrighty, and um, now we move on to uh, the, uh, the main turn. So, we're going to do some stuff. Except I can't do my super production now. And here's the interesting thing. Um, in, in the soul game, there are five of these cards. So this card gets drawn. And then these other ones get shuffled. And my buddies are going to draw two more. And again, this replicates in a multiplayer co-op game how everybody's talking about, well, I, I guess I could do production. I really want to do action, whatever it might be. So here's what my teammates can choose from. And I can choose any of these. And what do I want to do? Okay, well, hmm, okay, well, I know what I want to do. I want to start making blue and green things to deal with these. And I've only got one blue, and it is nice, but um, it's basically, whenever I find a different way to raise the temperature, I get two plants, which could then in turn help raise the oxygen level, of course. So that's cool, but this is going to combine with other stuff. It would be nice to do it, because I would get one thing done, because it's over 24, but... I, I got a lot of green, and hey, I need to do green for the catastrophic erosion. So how about I say, I'm going to trigger development so that I can get a discount on whatever green card I want to play. Which means, I don't want my buddies to play development because it'll be wasted. So they're going to do production. One player's going to do production. And then, oh, we're back to this again. One player can do action. And again, I don't have any action cards. Urgh. Nor... Have I? Let's see. Well, what do I need to do? Um, for the we got two things. I, I need to find ways to you know, uh, you know repopulate the oceans, but I also need to start getting O2 back in the atmosphere. And of course, the way we do the O2 is by um, getting enough plants. I'm not growing plants yet. So, all right. Anyway, though, I, I, I'm going to try and do a green thing. So, do I want to make some labs? Do I want to uh, get the Vesta shipyard, the Martian museum? Which, by the way, the Marsh Museum, uh, forgive the green screen again, but this is another opportunity to upgrade my phase cards. Plus, it just starts giving me production for the rest of the game. So that's something. Oh, I might like that one. Um, right, it's more of a long-term investment. Surface mines. Oh, the new ones that just showed up. Let's see here. So this one costs 13. I don't get a discount because I have not. I don't have any uh, steel investment. Uh, when I play a one of these types of cards, I... All right, oh, yeah, because this... Oh! Wow, this gives me steel and titanium. So it gives me discounts on both. And I could totally afford to do that. Do I have and which means this will suddenly the Vesta shipyard will cost five less, which will give me even more. And remember, didn't I have in my starting hand a lot of extra planet cards of of off-world cards. So the, the, and these are expensive cards, and I like playing expensive cards. So if I could start working on getting a nice discount engine on building these expensive cards, that could really pay off. Mm. But now another thing to think about. I know my buddies have said we're going to do an action. I still don't have any blue cards in play. I don't want to play the one because the one I could play doesn't even give me an action to do anyway. But remember, there's these basic actions as well. We've already lost one. If I pay 15, I can get this back. And I know that when I do, I'll get a card, which is worth three. So I'll get four back. So this really only costs 11. If I wanted to spend the equivalent of 11, because I'd be getting a card in exchange, I could get this back. And I could fight this erosion. But that, I mean, what do I got? I've got, um, I've got 22 to spend right now. So, maybe I want to go cheap and try to actually get this ocean back and get something built. Well, the cheapest green I've got is Laboratories, which will give me some science. I don't, not that I need science, but oh, didn't I have a crazy expensive thing that needed... Oh, that's right. I did have this. Uh, it needed four science, and it would be great, but I got rid of it. All right, so this will give me some science. And this says, during production, I draw a card for every three science I have, including this. So, by itself, it's nothing. But it could be the basis... Although it's my only science card I have. Arr! Okay, so I'm not going to go for that. Do I like this Martian Museum? I would like to upgrade, and it gives me nice passive income. And we are going to do production this turn. And I get another upgrade on one of my cards. But paying just a little bit more and starting to get a big, big discount on these big, super heavy space... I think that's it. I think 
I want to make surface mines. Uh, they, which is the thing that just fell into our lap because of the Baron Crater. All right, so... Anyway, everybody decide what they're doing, and right now I am saying, hey, I'm going to build a green card with a discount of three. So this actually only costs me ten. This is my second green. And, okay, there went my ten. Boom. And uh, fine. Easy peasy. And so I now have one steel, and I've got one titanium. And so uh, that's going to help me build more stuff in the future. Nice. And because I just built a green... We're one step closer to solving the catastrophic erosion. And you know what? At the end of this round, I think I might go on ahead and spend this to get rid of the other one. So that's pretty cool. All right. So, and there are no other players, so we're not doing any more green stuff. So we're done with that. And, oh, by the way, I could have marked that we are doing uh, actions, productions, and all of that. So we're done with the uh, development. Now we move on to actions. And I got to decide. I now have um, 5, 10, uh, I have 12. And because remember, anytime you want, you can trash a card and get three. So I could get three um, credits, which would get me to the 15 to get this back, which would let me draw another card. And um, right, so I'd be, I'd totally wipe myself out. But on the other hand, I am about to produce again. So what the heck? Let's do it. Uh, I'm not letting this action pass me by without doing something. Because i got to save this planet. And so I am going to spend... Um, right. So I've got, I need 15. I've got 12. What card am I going to sacrifice? I don't want to sacrifice any of these because I've just gotten a discount on all of them. So I don't want to sacrifice those or the volcanic soil. <sighs> I think, you know what? Science is not in my future. We're not very smart here at Burstar. Um, I'm going to discard this to get three more. Um, so that three plus 12 is the 15 I need to recover this ocean. Whee! And that gives me one, and it also gives me another card. Okay, cool. And what's the hand limit? I think it's ten, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so I've got eight cards in my hand. So that was an action. Hooray! Now, let's move on to production. Oh, and hey, by the way, don't forget, because I did this, my TR raised. So my income just raised as well. I get six bucks from that, and I get one heat. So we're getting close enough to start uh, heating up uh, the temperature, although the temperature hasn't dropped yet. Oh, this is another interesting thing, by the way. Uh, another change from the original game. In the original game, during an action phase, if you had enough heat or enough, um, oh, what do you call it, uh, plant life to be able to terraform, you were required to do it, even if you didn't want to because you were saving for something or whatever. You're not required to anymore. It's optional whether you want to do that or not. Uh, um, anyway, though, so... Um, Right, okay, so production. I got my heat, and I get my, uh, what do you call it, my two bucks. But then, my, oh, what was it? My greenhouse uh, factory, where, what was it? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, shoot. No, it was my super production. By the way, I've got my super production card back. Would have let me do a double of that, but we're not doing my super production. We're doing regular production. So I only got one. So I got some cash back and um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Save the oceans. That's all in a good day's work. So we have finished that. And now at the end of my turn, I will spend this, spend that, and the cat catastrophic erosion is gone. But the barren crater remains. Okay. So we are moving on to the next round. And um, I will not be able to develop this turn. But I, maybe we can do development over here because, um, nope. The one development I've got for my buddies, so I, there will be no green development this turn at all. Let me reshuffle that back up because I'm not supposed to know exactly what's coming. I just hadn't memorized those cards yet. Um, right. So, what have we got to do today? Um, we haven't hit yellow yet, but we do have, I have to lose an ocean or I have to lose temperature. And I think I'd rather lose temperature because we are, I am slowly but surely building up heat. So I think I will lose temperature uh, instead of more ocean because of that uh, barren crater. Alrighty, and then we draw a new one. And what's our third problem? We're into the tier twos now, folks. We have seismic aftershocks. Either discard a green card from my tableau. No! No! I don't know. No, no. Adjusting my production accordingly or lose an ocean. Um, folks, we're going to lose an ocean. And as long as this sticks around, we are losing O2 every round. Now, to get rid of this, one time, I've got to flip an ocean face up or discard three. I just flipped an ocean face up! Arg! Or discard three cards in hand um, during an action phase. So I can give up three cards, which is nine bucks worth of cards. Ugh. Okay. 
I don't know. But, but, but this is also very easy to get rid of. And remember, I could also get rid of it if I just make an expensive thing. Okay, so cool. Or not cool at all. But anyway, so we have a new one. And uh, draw a card from the uh, Crisis deck, resolve immediate effects. And now the dummy says, hey, well, I'm not doing these. They are going to do this card. They've got this one and this one. So I've got actions, productions, research I could have them do. And uh, for myself, I've got my super production back again if I want it. And what would I like to do? Well, I'm not quite sure, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of what the crisis mode is all about. You just have to imagine human players openly colluding with you trying to decide what actions rather than drawing from this special crisis deck. But what else comes with this expansion? Well, I briefly mentioned there is this new concept you can add of infrastructure. If you are playing with the infrastructure module, well, first of all, some new cards will get added to the deck. Or No, 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 no. No, the infrastructure doesn't. There's something else to that. If you're playing with the infrastructure module, you now have another metric. In a regular game, of terraforming Mars to trigger the end of the game, you have to get the O2 up and the wet temperature up and the oceans up and the infrastructure all the way up to 100% as well. And the way you do that is during actions, um, you know, unlike you know get, uh, getting oxygen by giving up lots of plants or the temperature by giving up lots of heat, you give up a little heat and a little uh, plant life together to increase infrastructure. Plus, every time this moves up, you get a card. Now, instead, you can pay 15 bucks, like getting the oceans back and move the infrastructure up and get a card. And so this definitely gives you a whole different route because um, you know it, it gives you more flexibility. Uh, a kind of a, rather than just like focusing like a laser on tons of plants or tons of heat, a little bit of both can get you moving up this track and increase your terraforming rating and, and give you more points and more income and all of that. So this is a new thing. Uh, like I said, the other new thing are the expansion comes with more boards, more cards for two additional players. And let's see what else is there. Oh, this is a really big deal. For the competitive game, you can't do these in cooperative. You can get these milestone slash objective tiles. What happens is every time you play, as part of setup, you put out three of each. They just come randomly. Uh, so in this game, if, if I were playing competitively, not cooperatively, we could be trying to be a builder, a terraformer, or a legend. And um, we were also trying to be a good project manager, a good visionary, and a good celebrity. Now, these ones, these trophies, will give you points to whoever did the best at this, you know, based on various and sundry things. You can go on ahead and zoom in and look at them a little bit more closely. And uh, these ones are we're racing for. As soon as somebody has six red cards in play or, you know, uh, has uh, you know moved up 15 times on the terraforming rating or whatever, you can immediately grab these and these are worth three points. If multiple people do it at the same time, there are these little three point tokens. You can say, oh, look, I also got three points for being a legend or a terraformer or whatever. So, and it's it, when you add these to the game, you also add different cards to the game that um, basically uh, give you uh, different objectives. Cards that cannot be built, for example, until you've done a milestone or, or things like that. So uh, that's another big element added to the game. In addition to the increased player count, the new giving you more flexibility for how to you know terraform the planet, the cooperative slash solo story mode, for lack of a better term. And one more thing I want to show you, because there's one other really cool kind of card that I was hoping I'd maybe draw one so you could see it. Let me just go on ahead and skip ahead a little bit. Let me see if I can find one in here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. D -d -d. Oh, come on. It's a very unique new um, icon. All right, let me just dig deeper into the deck, because I will find one. Stay alive, I will find you, wherever you are. Um, they're rare. They're super cool. Okay, and apparently they're all at the bottom. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's two of them back to back. The flea market and the subterranean pipeline. Let's talk about those. Let's say I had had drawn one. You know, and these aren't even very expensive. What does it mean to say, hey, when I build this flea market, it gives me what? Well, it gives me one of all of these. Um, these are programmable. A flea market or a subterranean pipeline, they could be anything. They could give you animals. They could be considered upgrades. They could be considered Earth-based or um, Jovian-based. They could be considered to be in orbit or on the planet. They could be microbes. They could be anything. These are super cool. They're very rare. There's only a few of them that get added to the deck. Um, and you know, and the tricky thing is, uh, if you get them at the wrong time and you're like, well, I don't know what I'm going to need in the future. Uh, but um, when you do, you, you hold on to these desperately so that when you're 
Oh, I just need one more science! Just one more science! Okay, well, I'll make this a very science-based flea market then. These are very cool new type of card also. So, that was one other new element in uh, Ares Expedition Discover, fa Discovery Foundation and Crisis. And that was the uh, preview, folks. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.